Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart. Welcome to another edition of Your Bible Questions Answered. Today is Thursday. It is the 15th day of February 2024. And as always, we have a very important question to answer today, and that is this. Does God have a plan for our lives? In fact, this is one of the most often asked questions we get. Does he have a plan for us? And the answer we're going to find out is, yes, indeed, he does. Now, the answer to this question in print is found in our book called What Everyone Needs to Know About Christian Living, from uh, the title Christian Living, one of our uh, 11 different categories that we have on our website, Educating Our World. It's question number 22, and it's simply asked, does God have a plan for our lives? So let's look at it. As we look at the question as to whether or not God has a plan for our lives, we must first realize that each of us has a unique life that is different from all others. Now, I want to read you a quote I came across the other day I thought was very profound, and I think it fits what this uh, question is all about. Our lives are original stories. Each one is different from every other. We are copyrighted with no possibility of plagiarism. Every story has a unique and different beginning. The conflicts, heroes, and villains will all vary. Some stories end sooner than others. The lives of the rich, powerful, famous, or influential are memorialized for future generations in biographies or autobiographies, while the poor often die in anonymity. However, a deep shadow hangs over each of our plots. The inescapable reality of sickness, death, and loss makes every one of our stories a tragedy in some degree or another. Yet scripture makes clear death will not have the final word. For those in Christ, resurrection will triumph. Amen to that. That's from Andreas J. Kirstenberger and Alexander Stewart. And the book is called The Days of the First Days of Jesus, the Story of the Incarnation. I thought it was a great uh, um, thought right there. And that's true. Each of our stories are different. We all have a, a unique life. It's and in the same way, God has a unique plan for each and every one of us. All right. So we're gonna find out three things. Number one, God has a plan for the entire human race. Number two, God has a general plan for each. Christian too, each believer, but also number three, God furthermore has a specific plan for you and me as believers in Jesus Christ. All right, let's look and see what the scripture says. Number one, God's plan for the human race. To begin with, concerning all of humanity, God has willed several things or has a plan. They include the following, God's desire is that all people are to become Christians. Bible makes it very clear. God wants everyone to be saved. He wants every single person to come to faith in Jesus Christ. Paul wrote to, to Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, this is good and pleases God our Savior. He wants all people to be saved and to learn the truth. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. So here's the question. What keeps people from being saved if he wants everyone to be saved? And the answer is real simple. It's their own unbelief. It's their choice. It's not God's choice. We find also that the Lord is slow to judge unbelievers because he wants them to repent. Here's what we read in 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord isn't slow to do what he promised, as some people think. Rather, he is patient for your sake. He doesn't want to destroy anyone, but wants all people to have the opportunity to turn to him and change the way they think and act. 2 Peter chapter 3, and verse 9. Bottom line is the Lord would like everyone to believe. This is his desire, but everyone doesn't believe. Why? Well, there's human stubbornness involved. It's not God that's keeping people from being saved, according to Scripture. Not at all. It's the stubbornness of human beings to believe the promises of God. Though his desire is that everyone comes to know Christ as Savior, we can thwart his desire. I mean, we as the human race, by rejecting him. When he was about to die by stoning before an angry crowd, the martyr Stephen spoke of the people of Israel resisting God's spirit. Here's what he said. You stubborn and hard-hearted people, you're always fighting against the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors did. Is there one prophet that your ancestors didn't mistreat? They killed the prophets who told about the coming of the one who obeys God. Now you have turned against him and killed him. Angels gave you God's law, but you still don't obey it. That's Acts chapter 7, verses 51 to 53. In other words, the Christ came, the Messiah came as promised, the people put him to death, and uh, just consistently what they've done in the past with every single prophet. So the point is, God's spirit can be resisted by sinful humanity. 
Still, the Lord wants everyone to come and know, to know him. So number one, he has a general plan for humanity. He'd like them to believe, but it's our choice. Number two, God also has a general plan for believers. We read about this in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. God's secret plan has now been revealed to us. It is a plan centered on Christ, designed long ago according to his good pleasure. And this is his plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because of Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us from the beginning, and all things happen just as he decided long ago. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. Now, the Bible says that God does have a plan, a roadmap for Christians, and there are a number of things which Scripture says about this plan. First of all, God wants Christians, all of us, to be more like Christ. Uh, this is, uh, according to Romans 8, 29, the desire that we will be conformed to the image of his son, which basically is your a final, uh, you know, where you're going to finally end up, and I will also. I remember one of my professors once in Bible school uh, talked about our future, our destiny, and he said, here it is, Romans 8, 29. You want to know where you're going to be someday? Here's what it says. For God knew his people in advance. He chose them to be like his son, and so that his son would be the firstborn with many brothers and sisters. He chose us to be like Christ. And someday, 1 John 3, 2 says we're going to be like him, for we're going to see him as he is. That doesn't mean we're going to be perfect uh, in the sense that we're going to be God, but we will be perfect in the sense we won't have sin anymore. So God wants us to be like Christ in this life. Now, what's interesting, any abilities that we do have to be like Christ have been given to us. The Bible makes this very clear. Uh, Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 4, 7, who says that you are better than any other people? What do you have that wasn't given to you? If you were given what you have, why are you bragging as if it weren't a gift? 1 Corinthians 4, 7. All right, he wants us to remember where all the gifts come from. They are from him and from him alone. There is no reason any of us should boast about anything as we attempt to be more like Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, he also wants us to bear fruit along this line. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. I love this verse. For we are God's masterpiece. The Greek says God's poema, God's poem. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So believers are to bear spiritual fruit in his service. We are to show tangible proof that we belong to him. So this is the general plan for all believers. God has these general plans for us to be like Christ, to bear spiritual fruit, and to realize anything we have is a gift from God. However, and here's the key, he also has a personal plan for all believers. Number three, for you and I, although he has a universal will for all humanity and all believers, he also has a personal will or plan for each and every Bible-believing Christian. We have a number of biblical examples of this. First of all, we know from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, that his plan is good. Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, Romans 12, 2. So God's plan for us is good. This is important for us to know and to understand. He has good things planned for us. Let's give three examples in Scripture of God having uh, a specific plan for each individual. Example one, believers were scattered so that they could minister the gospel elsewhere. When persecution came to the first Christians, it was God's will for the apostles to minister in the church in Jerusalem and for others to carry the gospel to the other parts of the earth. We read the following, the book of Acts. Saul approved of putting Stephen to death. On that day, widespread persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. Most believers, except the apostles, were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Devout men buried Stephen as they mourned loudly for him. Saul tried to destroy the church. He dragged men and women out of one home after another and threw them into prison. That's Acts chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. Now, what's interesting, God used specifically the scattering of the people to do what? To carry the gospel elsewhere. Before that time, before the persecution, all the Christians were there in Jerusalem. They didn't go anywhere else. Now he scattered them out to bring the gospel elsewhere. In other words, his plan included the dispersion of believers so they could preach the gospel in many places. Number two, second example, Paul was told he would carry the gospel to many people. 
Saul of Tarsus, who became the Apostle Paul when he was converted to Jesus Christ on the Damascus Road, uh, basically the, was then approached by a man named Ananias. And he was told Ananias to tell Paul, or tell Saul, who became Paul, what's going to happen. This is interesting, Acts 9, 15, and 16. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name, Acts 9, 15, and 16. Now, Paul was told that he would carry the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles, to their kings, and to the people of Israel. This was the specific plan the Lord had for his life. Also, number three, Paul and Barnabas were set aside for God's work. We're told that in Acts chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Here's what it says. Among the prophets, the teachers of the church at Antioch of Syria were Barnabas, Simeon called the black man, Lucius from the Cyrene, Manaean, the childhood companion of King Herod, Antipas, and Saul. One day, as these men were worshiping the, the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, dedicate Barnabas and Saul for the special work I have for them. Acts 13, 1 to 2. Notice the special work the Lord had for Barnabas and Saul. Now, these three examples, and there's many others we could give, demonstrate that not every believer has the same calling for his or her life. God has a unique plan for each of and every one of us, like he has a unique plan for the world. He has a unique plan for you, and he has a unique plan for me. Now, this is very important to understand. This personal plan that he has, this personal will of God for our lives, is for believers only, those who have trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. In other words, the Lord doesn't answer the prayers or guide the lives of unbelievers. In fact, there's no basis for communication between God and those who are lost. Jesus used the analogy of sheep and the shepherd in John chapter 10. Here's what he says. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought all out, out, all out his own, in other words, when he's brought every one of his own out, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. And here's the punchline. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. That's John chapter 10, verses 3 and 5, and 14 and 15. Now, 3 through 5 and 14 and 15. So here's the bottom line. The believer can expect God to reveal his will. The unbeliever cannot. It's his sheep that know his voice. And only he only speaks to his sheep, the believers. He is the shepherd of the saved, not of the lost. So finally, we can expect to find the will of God for our lives. Each believer can discover this. How? Matthew 7, 7 and 8, the famous message of Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to find he's not hiding it from us. Keep asking, and it will be given to you. Keep searching, and you will find. Keep knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who searches finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be open. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. We can't expect God to reveal himself to us and reveal his will to us. Jesus also said in John 7, 17, those who want to follow the will of God will know if what I teach is from God or if I teach my own thoughts. John 7, 17. In other words, we can know. We can know God's will. We seek him. We ask him to show us how to guide our lives. It's a daily thing that we do, but he does have a personal distinct plan for you and I. All of us are unique. We have our own story, like we said at the beginning, our own biographies that uh, no one can plagiarize. And God also has a unique plan for your life and my life. And he's working that plan out right now. How do we find it? Well, we serve him. We walk with him every day. We know the things he wants us to do, and then we ask for guidance in the certain decisions that we make. That's what the living God has for each and every one of us. We are his sheep, and we hear his voice. And may God grant us the uh, discernment to hear his voice in the midst of these other voices that are calling out to us uh, from the evil world system. All right, I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching, and, and until next time, as we do another edition of Your Bible Questions Answered, may our Lord richly, richly bless you.